The third-ranked Michigan Wolverines will travel the Happy Valley to take on the 10th-ranked Penn State Nittany Lions in what I think will be the highest quality matchup of the week. I think that Michigan is undervalued. I think they're the most efficient team in the country, the best team in the country, and I think from what I can tell right now, they are on track to fulfilling my preseason prediction that they will win the national championship. Penn State is ranked 10th, but I also think they are undervalued by the college football playoff committee. I do think they are better than ninth ranked Ole Miss, for example, and I do also think at this moment I trust James Franklin and Penn State more than I do Steve Sarkeesian and Texas. I personally have Penn State ranked 8th, Michigan ranked number 1. I've already done two videos on this game, but I think it's so important that I want to provide even more content. I did an early preview and deep analysis on Monday and a full-on preview and prediction video Tuesday. Those are both linked down below in the description and also in the pinned comment in the comment section that I do for every video, so I encourage you to check those out. I am going to say on here for context, I did predict Michigan to win by how much and what's the total and who covers the spread. You'll have to check out my preview and prediction video to get the answer to that, but I will give it to you all that I'm picking Michigan to go into Happy Valley, win this game in their 10th game of the season. Meanwhile, Penn State, I predict, will fall to 8-2. This is a game with so many ramifications. This, to a certain degree, is a play-in game for the college football playoff. If Penn State loses, they're out. If they win, they're still in the hunt. If Michigan just wins out for the rest of the year, they're in. If they lose this game, I don't know what's going to happen. So today I'm going to give five reasons why Penn State will beat the Michigan Wolverines. Tomorrow, though, I will release another video that gives five reasons why Michigan will beat Penn State. Just because Penn State, they have a lot of advantages here that I think people aren't necessarily talking about. I've heard people say that Penn State would be very fortunate to win this game and Michigan would have to shoot itself in the foot in order to lose. And I don't know if that's exactly wrong, but I think to a certain degree that is somewhat of a lazier analysis. So I want to dive deeper. But before we do so, Please make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell and also share this video around and hit that like button. That way we can reach our goal of 20,000 subscribers on College Football with Sam, the best YouTube channel for Big Ten football by the end of the 2023 college football season. Comment your thoughts down below on this video and also give some reasons why you think Penn State will beat Michigan. And lastly, if you want to support the channel, and gain some extra content, including my picks for games across the country, check out my Patreon page via the link in the description. But without further ado, let's get into reason number one why Penn State will beat Michigan, and that is Penn State's elite defense. The Nittany Lions have the second-ranked defense in terms of total defense, yards allowed per game, and the third-ranked defense in terms of points allowed per game. They're only behind Michigan in both yards per game and points per game, and only behind Ohio State in points per game. They have a top three defense, arguably top two when you watch how their offense plays. They have the second ranked defense in terms of ESP and efficiency. They have one of the best defenses in all of college football. Let's get that straight. Um, Manny Diaz has done a spectacular job this season, and while Penn State does have a phenomenal pass defense, specifically pass rush, in this point I want to focus on their run defense. They only allow 1.8 yards per carry, which is number one in the country. Meanwhile, Michigan only averages 4.6 yards per carry on opposing defenses, which is 41st nationally. This could be a massive mis mismatch in favor of the Nittany Lions. Penn State's run defense against Michigan's rushing offense. Michigan has been a little more pass-focused, pass-centric this season. J.J. McCarthy has had two games already where he has had 30 or more passing attempts against East Carolina and against Purdue. J.J. McCarthy is second in quarterback efficiency with a 92.3 QBR. 
He's operating right now as one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Roman Wilson has 10 receiving touchdowns, and Blake Corum has 16 rushing touchdowns. Michigan, from a power running standpoint, is still one of the best rushing attacks in the nation. They just don't get big plays through the passing game or the running game. They are a very methodical offense. It reminds me of Georgia's offense from last year, where they had a pass play against Tennessee from, it was Stetson Bennett to Arian Smith. It was only a 50-yard passing play, and that was their longest passing play of the season, where Georgia was just so efficient and so methodical on offense that they didn't have to be explosive to be one of the best offenses in the country. I think that's Michigan's offense, but I could be wrong. Michigan's rushing attack could just be straight-up average, above average, or good, and Penn State's rushing defense could be the best in America, as their statistics say. I think a fair critique of Penn State's rushing defense is they faced Ohio State when they didn't have Travion Henderson. Iowa does not have a good rushing offense, and they weren't healthy against Penn State. Illinois, they have a bad rushing attack. Northwestern is one of the worst rushing offenses in the country. And Maryland's offensive line has taken a massive hit ever since they've played Ohio State, and they weren't able to effectively run on Illinois, Northwestern, Ohio State in the second half, or Penn State for the whole game. However, I will give Penn State credit. While C.J. Donaldson and Garrett Green were able to run on them with limited success in the first game of the season when Penn State faced off against West Virginia, there were no explosive plays allowed in that game. West Virginia has one of the best offensive lines in the country, and they do have a great running attack. And Penn State was able to limit, not completely shut down, but limit West Virginia's run game. Michigan has a better pass offense than West Virginia does, But Penn State, they're playing in a big game, they're at home, they force a ton of turnovers every game, they held up against Ohio State defensively for almost the entire four quarters, all 60 minutes despite Drew Aller being inaccurate and the offensive line really um, shutting down and turtling. I merged shutting down and turtling there, that was rather funny. But anyway, Manny Diaz, if his defense can force Michigan into passing the football on two out of every three downs. If he can get Michigan's run game off J.J. McCarthy, if the game is on his back, could make some mistakes. He could throw multiple interceptions. There is a chance that in this game, J.J. McCarthy could perform like he did against Bowling Green or TCU rather than perform like he did against Ohio State on the road last year or like he did against Michigan State this season, for example. He could be either extremely efficient and Penn State's run defense isn't a factor even if they do shut down Michigan's rush offense, but you have to take away something from Michigan. You do. If Penn State wants to win this matchup, they have to limit Michigan's offense. And I think a great way to do that is to limit the run game. Michigan is still running more times than they pass per game. They are not a pass-heavy team. They run, and they try and test you with the run and test the box, but they're very efficient at passing the football. So maybe by completely shutting down the run, even on third and short or fourth and short, if Michigan has to pass all the time to win and they have to go outside of their comfort zone, that could create some issues. I think that Penn State's defense... Not just their run defense, but their defense overall is the number one reason why they will win this game, if they end up doing so. Number two is Penn State's vaunted pass rush. The Nittany Lions are one of the best teams in all of college football at getting after the quarterback. They earn 4.3 sacks per game, which is second in the country, and they're top 10 in defensive passing efficiency allowed. On top of that, Michigan's offensive line is vulnerable. They've allowed eight sacks in their previous three games, which were against Purdue, Michigan State, and Indiana. And while Michigan State, Purdue, and Indiana do have decent to above-average defensive fronts, none of them even compare with Penn State defensively. Not even close. Chop Robinson. Chop Robinson is a key player for Penn State. He's been injured for the previous few weeks, though I've heard from the comment section from Penn State fans, and thank you for providing me with this information, 
that he has been practicing for the past week, but it sounds like Penn State's defensive staff has been wise, and they've been precautionarily holding him out, potentially for this game or just in general to ensure that he is healthy. He typically starts at defensive end alongside Adisa Isaac, and if he's healthy for Michigan, that is absolutely massive. The spread right now on this game is only four and a half in favor of Michigan. A sack or two sacks in this game could easily make a field goal or touchdown difference. It, it, it could swing it could swing the game just one or two plays easily. And Chop Robinson is a big time player on a defense that is one of the best in the country and not just stopping the run statistically, but also getting after the quarterback. Penn State's secondary, from what I understand watching Penn State football, may not be as good as their pass rush. I think the statistics might be skewed due to a flukish performance by the secondary against Indiana where there were multiple blown coverages, along with a game against Ohio State where Marvin Harrison Jr. is just going to get open. So I think that Penn State's secondary is better than defensive passing efficiency and pro football focus grades would indicate. And their pass rush, Michigan's offensive line outside of maybe West Virginia's is the best offensive line that Penn State has played all season long. And I think Michigan has a better offensive line than West Virginia. So I don't know if the secondary or the pass rush is going to be the better half of Penn State's passing defense. But from what we know right now, the pass rush is the superior unit. The defensive ends, the edge players, the linebackers are better than the safeties and corners when it comes to pass defense for now. So that's reason number two. Getting pressure on J.J. McCarthy is critical if Penn State wants to beat the third-ranked Wolverines. Absolutely critical. Of course, you want to do everything right defensively, but I think that run defense is number one ahead of pass rush because Michigan... They can still run the ball for four yards per carry, and if they do run the ball for four yards per carry, that will allow them to establish rhythm and balance. If Penn State can't stop the run, I have a harder time seeing them win than if they can shut down or limit the pass, but Michigan can still run and be on schedule. However, there is a path to win by forcing Michigan into running for three, four, maybe five yards per carry. But sacking J.J. McCarthy on critical downs or getting pressure on him to force turnovers, whether it's a strip sack, like one that Arnold Ebicady had against Kate McNamara in 2021 that nearly turned the game around in Penn State's favor, or whether it's coverage sacks, whether, you know, a strip sack, again, like I've already mentioned, or a pick six, like one that J.J. McCarthy threw last year to Curtis Jacobs. And that was off of pressure and J.J. McCarthy trying to force a play where he shouldn't have. So the pass rush is another critical reason why Penn State can and will win this game. Again, I just want to mention, I'm phrasing Penn State will win this game or they can win this game as part of this video of five reasons why Penn State will beat Michigan. Just giving reasons to support a side that is different from my own. I do think that Michigan wins this game. But all these reasons play, or I think will play, into the fact of a Penn State victory if they do come out on top. Number three, speaking of which, is Happy Valley. Penn State has, I think, the best home field venue in the sport of college football. And Beaver Stadium will be loud. It's not a night game. It's not a whiteout that was wasted on the Iowa game, which is going to be a victory even if the game was played in Kinnick Stadium. Regardless, it's going to be loud. It will be packed full of Penn State fans, and that will make a difference. I said in my preview and prediction video, if this game was on a neutral site or in Ann Arbor, I would guarantee a Michigan win. Guarantee in the best sense that I can. No win is guaranteed until it's played. The clock hits zero and your team will win. But I would have infinitely more confidence in Michigan to win if this game was on a neutral field. Let's say in like the Fiesta Bowl or the Rose Bowl, Sugar Bowl, Peach Bowl, wherever the college football playoffs are on any given year this year. It's the Sugar Bowl and the Rose Bowl, obviously. But this game being in Happy Valley makes a big difference, and you can't deny that. James Franklin, he's 3-16 and 
against top 10 teams. That's pretty abysmal. However, his one regular season top 10 win, that came at home. Beaver Stadium makes that big of a difference to where James Franklin, a coach who cannot win big games, won a big game at home. That's the difference Beaver Stadium makes. That's the difference. And I'm not saying James Franklin isn't a good coach. He is. I just don't think he's an elite coach, a near elite coach. Maybe, maybe he's a great coach. If he's a great coach, a win here would solidify that claim. He's six and seven in top 25 home games at Penn State with an even worse record on the road. Michigan has not faced a road environment like this since they played at Ohio State last season. So this is going to be a tough test, I'd say, and especially the first few drives for Michigan. I wouldn't be surprised if there are false starts, if there are some flags thrown at Michigan's way. Oh, speaking of which, Michigan and Penn State are both big brands. And we know, not all the time, but sometimes, that a big brand with a home field advantage does get some favored calls. Believe me, I've watched my own Michigan Wolverines play. There have been multiple games where Michigan has gotten away with potentially turnovers or penalties, defensive pass interference, running into the punter slash kicker that weren't called. They just straight up weren't. Michigan is going to be on a home field that they're not used to playing in. They play there biannually, and there's just a lot at play here. Beaver Stadium, I think, is closer to a touchdown advantage than a field goal advantage that is typical for most college football home venues. So that's reason number three why Penn State will win this football game. Reason number four is the time is now. James Franklin, you have to win a big game at some point. You just have to. If you are the head coach at Penn State, your talent level, by the way, is equal to Michigan. Just look up 24-7 sports team talent composite. Them and Michigan have the same level, the same level of talent. The time is now, at least in terms of high school recruiting rankings. If you factor in development and coaching and experience, I think Michigan has the better roster. But in terms of four stars, five stars, blue chip ratio, Michigan and Penn State pretty much have equal talent. The Lions are 8-1, 5-1. They cannot afford another loss if they want to reach Indianapolis or the college football playoff. So they're going to be in wounded animal mode. We've already established they have a home field advantage. We've already established that their defense is elite, both in pass defense and run defense. We're basically stacking reasons in this video, and I will explain this again in tomorrow's video for five reasons why Michigan will beat Penn State. We're stacking reasons here, really in order from what is the most likely cause for victory for the least likely cause for victory. Um, reason number five, you might dispute with me, but I think reason number five is unlikely to be a reason, but there's a chance of it, and we'll get to it. James Franklin, he's 3-16 and 16 against top 10 teams. However, remember Jim Harbaugh? Pre-2021, I didn't mean to say pre-2020, though most of us don't count the COVID year, so we could say pre-2020's Jim Harbaugh was very similar to James Franklin and his entire career at Penn State, unable to win big games. There's a debate going on, of course, that the reason Jim Harbaugh's winning big games now is because of his because of his team's cheating. This game will play a verdict in that. If Michigan loses in this game and loses to Ohio State and falls to 10 and 2, it's fair to assume that the only reason Harbaugh won the Big 10 or one of the biggest reasons why is because he had advanced knowledge. If Harbaugh wins this game, wins the national title and beats Ohio State and wins the Big 10 without Stallions at, you know, Minters and Moore's side, the coordinators, then that will validate that what Michigan did the previous two seasons while assisted was probably legitimate. But we're talking mainly about Penn State here. Jim Harbaugh turned it around. I don't think that cheating was the biggest reason why he won. And therefore, I think James Franklin can turn the ship around. Maybe that starts in a few days. It's two days from now, at noon, less than 48 hours from now. Maybe that's when the turnaround starts for Penn State. And they can build to either a Big Ten championship this season, or maybe they go 11-1, and one, lose the tiebreaker to Michigan or OSU, and they get to build for one next season. At some point, you either are who you are, 
where you have to turn around the ship. And Penn State fans, I know, along with college football fans, are waiting on James Franklin. It's like the meme where there's the guy with the stick to the rock or to whatever image you put in the meme who just says, come on, man, do something. That's what Penn State fans and college football fans are looking at, what they're saying to James Franklin while looking at him. Come on, do something. Win one of these top 10 games and not a bowl game against, you know, Utah in the Rose Bowl or against Wisconsin in the Big Ten Championship game when you've already exceeded expectations. Win one in the regular season that can put you on the path to achieving bigger and better things than you've achieved for your entire career at Penn State. Make the jump. James Franklin, if he doesn't win a big game this season or next year with Aller or whenever Aller leaves, if he doesn't win one for the tenure that Aller, a five-star supposed generational quarterback, is at Penn State, will he ever win another big game? That's a legitimate question really is, but I think that's a good reason. It might be one that people will say I'm grabbing at straws, but think about Michigan in 2021. That was a critical game. Michigan was in wounded animal mode. They were at home. There were some matchup advantages they could exploit, and everything just came together. Number five is Drew Aller's talent. Aller has 1,895 passing yards, 20 passing touchdowns, and only one interception. And he has a 73.8 quarterback efficiency rating, which is 25th nationally. He had a big game against Maryland. A big game against Maryland on the road. His next best performance was against West Virginia. And after that, I would say against Iowa. I'm not going to delve into Delaware or UMass. Those are nothings. It's only worth bringing up J.J. McCarthy's performance against Bowling Green because it sucked. Like I'm not talking about his performance against East Carolina or UNLV, where he was just majestic. At least talk about Power 5 competition, whether it's good or bad Power 5 competition. Aller plays his best at home, and he has a cannon of an arm. Arm strength is not Aller's problem. Like, let's say, Kyle McCord's or Cade McNamara's or a lot of quarterbacks. His problem, I think, is similar to Jalen Milrow. You have limitless talent, but your accuracy especially in the short to intermediate passing game, is questionable. The dirty secret with Drew Aller is that even with his high ceiling that he has, he's a five-star coming out of high school, drew Josh Allen comparisons, the dirty secret with him is he's averaging only about 6.5, 6.6, 6.7 yards per pass attempt. And he's only completing 62% of his passes, and... Those numbers, even though Michigan's defense has only faced one offense that is top 50 in the country in UNLV, who has an awesome offensive coordinator in Brennan Marion, an offensive coordinator that I'd like Michigan to have if Sharon Moore leaves for a head coaching job, and an offensive coordinator that I think any program in the country would be happy with, even with Michigan's defense not facing great offenses and on average facing bad offenses, Michigan's defense we know is great or near elite. We're just wondering if it's a generational defense or an elite defense or just a defense that is great but that doesn't have that elite touch to it. Aller, I have a hard time seeing him perform at a high level against a defense like Michigan's. A harder time than I see McCarthy performing against a defense like Penn State's. McCarthy has double the starting experience, if not slightly more than Aller. And McCarthy last year looked better than Aller has so far this season, minus turnovers. This is one thing that Aller's good at, is I don't think Aller will turn over the football all that often in this matchup, whether Penn State loses or wins. He's not a turnover machine. He's very conservative with the football. He has a cannon of an arm. Um... If he can hit deep shots, Penn State, they'll be able to make Michigan's defense uncomfortable. That will open up the run game more, or maybe Penn State runs to open up the pass. Who knows? Aller is going to have to do something that so far this season he has not done, and that is have an epic, near-perfect performance. Can he do that? 
There's a reason I put this as reason number five is I think it is very unlikely, but he has the talent to do so. If we were asking, let's say, you know, Brandon Peters, John O'Korn, Wilton Spate, even Sean Clifford for Penn State, Christian Hackenberg, I don't think those quarterbacks would be able to achieve such a feat against this Michigan defense. Aller, much like J.J. McCarthy, and I would even say Trace McSorley with his talents, while it would be unlikely given the position that Aller's in with this Penn State team, it would be at least possible. So that's reason number five as to how Penn State can or why Penn State will beat the Wolverines is Drew Aller's talent. He doesn't turn over the football. He's a top 25, top 30, top 20 quarterback. He has a great wide receiver in Keandre Lambert-Smith who has over 500 receiving yards and five or six receiving touchdowns, and he has great tight ends in Theo Johnson and Tyler Warren. Also, Aller can scramble. He's not very quick as a scrambler, but he has pocket awareness, he can get out of the pocket, and he's powerful on the ground. I mean, in, in quarterback sneaks, um, this, this guy's unstoppable under center when he sneaks the football. Those are five reasons why Penn State can beat Michigan and five reasons why they will beat Michigan if they come out on top on Saturday. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video and watching it. I want to give special thanks to Crash2488, Anthony McDowell, and Justin Roge, my Heisman patrons, Spencer Bringhurst, Noody DLC, and SFS Inverted. Thank you for being all American patrons. Will Loftus, Gabriel Callender, Roaming Gnome, Matthew Sale, Chris Lane, Austin Christmas, and Zubin Za. Thank you for being all conference patrons. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you all around. Let's have a phenomenal week 11. Bye-bye.